Kay Show. Uh, Giants hire Joe Judge. And uh, we bring in the foremost authority on the New York Giants and their move today, and that is the great Larry David. Yeah, the world's foremost authority. That's right. Exactly. You're, 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 you're really locked in on this. Uh, you, you, you assumed they were going to hire Joe I Judge thought, all along. I thought that... Oh, well, yeah, right. <laughs> did, did anybody call that? Nobody... No nobody, one called it. Was his name... I never read his name anywhere. Other than the fact that they interviewed him. That was all Oh, he was interviewed. Yes, okay. Right. I, I don't even think I read well, that. Yeah. But he wasn't one of, like, the top four or five names that we no, read about. No, well, this is eerily similar to Daniel Jones. Like, nobody heard anything about Jones yeah. until we got closer to the draft, and nobody heard about Judge until it seemed like everybody else didn't want the job. Maybe, maybe this will go the way of Jones, right? They seem to like this unknown shock the world, and hopefully it'll work out. How did you feel about Jones this year? Did you like him? I did. And I, and I wanted to see how it was going to play out. I mean, they knew more about drafting quarterbacks than I did, and just because he no, wasn't a popular no, no, selection. They, no, they don't. Yeah. They really don't. I, I mean, when you think about the fact uh, that um, Bill Polian wanted to make Lamar Jackson a, a wide receiver, mm -hmm. it's, it's, what, what does anybody know? They don't know anything. Now, you're a big Jet fan. What do you think about Darnold? How did he look this year other than the mono? I stopped watching after... They were two and seven. Wow. Really? You made a decision. Well, I, I golf on Sunday, so I, I have to. First of all, I, t I, I tape the games. Okay. And then I would come back after golf, and I would go through one of those days. No, 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 don't tell me score. No score. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, then I'd go home and I'd watch, and, you know, nothing surprised me at all. Now, uh, I, I didn't even know this. I found this out today, but you are actually a, a part of the Jets hierarchy. And I'll, I'll tell you exactly what I'm talking about. Mike Tannenbaum was on with our 10 to 1 show today. And when he got hired as the GM of the Jets, you don't even know this, Peter. This is what he said about an interaction with Larry David. 2006, my first year as general manager, about five days before the draft, phone rings. My assistant comes in and says, Larry David's on the phone. I'm like, get out of here. Larry David's on the phone. Larry David's on the phone for you. Pick it up. Mike, this is Larry. You got to draft Reggie Bush. You have to draft him. So, long story short, we had a great conversation. I'm like, you know, Larry, we'd love to send you some, you know, some jet stuff. And, uh, you know, what size are you? And he, and he, like, puts me on hold, covers up the phone. It's like, Dolores, what size am I? Am I large? Am I, like, totally in character. Uh, That's crazy. Long story short, we, we hit it off. We go out there. We spend the day with him. And he is one of these guys that literally will drive a Toyota Prius to his private plane. And we're leaving him. And we're like, you know, Larry, what are you doing tonight? He's like, you know, I got invited to a bowling party, but I hate the shoes. The shoes, they're dirty. Other people wear them. Like, he was totally, his life is his character. He was as authentic as you can be, and he's a huge Jets fan. So when he's on today, make sure you ask him about what, you know, his thoughts are on Coach Gase and uh, Sam Darnold. All right, so first of all, they didn't listen to you about Bush. You, no, they didn't. Sad. <laughs> Very sad. Second no, that all. was a good draft for them, by the way. Ferguson, uh, DeBrickashaw, uh -huh. Ferguson, and... Uh, Nick Mangold, yeah. Now, have you had any Joe Douglas interaction? Have you called the Joe no, Douglas? No. no, I haven't reached out to Joe. You should. <laughs> He's tremendous. Yeah, but I did. I did call Mike McCagnon before the 2018 draft, and I, I recommended that he draft Lamar Jackson. I have a witness. Really? Yes, I have a witness. And what did he call. say to you when you said that? He kind of gave me the most condescending. <laughs> really? <laughs> wow. Yeah. So you actually yeah, I, told him that? Yeah, I told him that. He, he kind of la he laughed at me, but... Who can blame him? Nobody thought uh, Jackson was going to be Except good. for the Ravens. Except for the Ravens. Yeah, but, so yeah. what are your thoughts on Gase? I can't, I can't take the hat. <laughs> He's, I can't take a coach wearing a hat constantly. He tells me that there's something about him. He's not comfortable with himself. Because I, I, when I started doing stand-up, I wasn't comfortable, and I started putting a hat on because it, I, it was, gave me like a different persona, a different character, because I was hiding. That's what he's doing. He's hiding. Either he's hiding baldness or there's something about his personality that oh. he's uncomfortable with. But you, you can't trust a man who wears a hat. He's got to take the hat off. He's got to face the public. <laughs> He's got to be out there. Get rid of the hat. Well, but uh, he has it so close to his eyes, I think he's trying to hide the yeah, eyes. You know the eyes. I mean, we, we play this whenever we talk about him, thanks to you. Yeah. All right, crazy eyes killer. All right, crazy eyes killer. Like, that's, he's crazy eyes killer. We think he's covering the eyes because he got ripped in his uh, initial press conference. Yeah. Remember I, the following the taco? Remember yeah, that I remember, meme? I remember. I remember, yeah. You see yeah. memes? Do memes make it to you? 
I, occasionally I see them, yeah. yeah. When they play the curb music, is that what you're talking yes, about? Yes, yeah, those yeah. are big ones. Yeah, yeah the... right. Now, Larry, uh, David is here because uh, tonight, the first episode of the 10th season of Curb Your Enthusiasm is going to be shown at a, a sold-out event at the 92nd Street Y, and I'm lucky enough that I'm going to do a Q&A with Larry at the, at the event. Uh, I, I was looking up some stuff today to talk about with you. Do you realize it's 20 years? Yeah. That's uh, unbelievable. Ten, ten seasons took 20 years. But it took five years between seasons eight and nine. That's a good boss that said, yeah, take your yeah. time. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I, gotta, I have to admit, other than you guys, I have a pretty good job. But nobody can beat this job that you have. <laughs> this, this job... This is, this is, as the kids say, sick. You know? I mean, this is insane. You come here, you talk about sports, it's crazy. Crazy. You would do this job? In a second. Really? Yeah. There's a boss in there. He, yeah. he would hire you in yeah, a second. Yeah, the, GM, the GM's waiting right there. <laughs> that Gentile man right oh, there, yeah, Tim nice. McCarthy. <laughs> no, this is, this is Peter. You, you really lucked out with this. Uh, right? Yeah. I know. I, they threw me in here four years ago. Yeah. It's been... Uh, I, I don't know how the hell you pulled this off. Oh, this is fantastic. Thank you. I, I got to tell you, I, I admire your job. Um, so I was thinking about this the other day. Uh, it go, you've been on since I was in college, Curb started. Yeah. And he went to the same college as you. Oh, yeah. And I went to Maryland. Oh, yeah. I went to Maryland. I know. Yeah. You, me, Jim Henson, yeah. Len Bias. Uh, Len Bias. Uh, I know. I'm no, sorry to bring brought up everybody that. Down. Yeah, I'm sorry to What's bring that down. Come on. But um, <laughs> you were on in the prime, and the, the very beginning and prime of The Sopranos. Did you, did you and Gandolfini have any uh, crossover no, no, experiences? Never met. Never met him one time. No. Uh uh. Wow, and even though that was, you guys were at prime time at the same, yeah. at the very same moment. Yeah. Did you expect, how long did you think the run would be when you started Curb? One season. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I thought Seinfeld was going to be one season. I just don't, uh, I, first of all, I, I don't know, I just couldn't imagine it going this long for sure. My agent once said to me, you know, back in those days, says, you know, if you do 10 seasons, you could get into syndication. And, and I, I laughed in his face, and here I am, ten seasons later. <laughs> now, I, I thought about this question driving in. Are you closer, in, in real life, are you closer to Larry David in Curb or George Costanza at Seinfeld? <laughs> who's, who's closer to the real you? Uh, that, that, that's, 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 that's very good. Question. <laughs> there are many elements of both, I'm uh -huh. afraid. Uh, probably Curb Larry, yeah. Really? Well, Curb Larry is more of an... Uh, he's more of my uh, idealized version of what a person should be. He's a, he's a fantasy. Uh-huh. Yeah. What you'd like to be. What I'd like to be, whereas Costanza is more of the worst parts of me. <laughs> who I it, don't... Costanza is who I don't want to be. TV Larry's who I want to be. Yeah. But he's, there's a lot of you in both. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Is Curbed less or more fun because you're in it, as opposed to Seinfeld? Um, well, Seinfeld was a lot of... Jerry and I had a great time writing together. Um, but I guess it's more fun being in the show. That, being in the show was a lot of fun because uh, people insult me all the time, and, and um, that really makes me laugh. I don't know if anybody has ever called you vile names... Oh, um, sure. Oh, all the no, time. Yeah, you do Michael. it all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> the biggest insults I get on a daily basis are from Michael and my wife. <laughs> Forget Twitter. Yeah, but you don't laugh at him. See, on the show, I can laugh at him. In life, I don't get insulted that much. I don't, I don't, I don't have a, 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 I don't have a Michael. Michael in your life who's been mean to you all the time. Yeah. I'm available for yeah. that if you like. But, uh, Don, you know, I'm really into uh, the Rangers this year. You are? Yeah. yeah I'm calling the game tonight. Yeah, I, I wish I could go, but we got this event. Yeah. <laughs> Shosturkin making his National Hockey League debut. I know. So I didn't realize you were yeah, into when, when the did Rangers, you get so too. When did you get so dialed into the Rangers? Are you serious? You've always been... I didn't know. Always. Always. Always, yes. Did Rangers, you do your homework on this interview? Sorry, Rangers. 95, the, the Devil Ranger episode. Putty. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. I, for, I forgot that that existed. That's right. By the way, I couldn't watch the first two periods of the Messier game. Couldn't watch... While you were golfing? I was too nervous. It was like when Patterson fought Johansson. Right. I was so nervous because I was a Patterson fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was so nervous. My father wouldn't let me listen to it on the radio. He said, you're not listening. Really? <laughs> yeah. And so I was so nervous for that Devils uh, Rangers game. I, I, I couldn't so watch So what it. made you go to the third period? Just because you I had to check in? I, I had to check in. And they were losing. Yeah, they were losing. Yeah. So I thought, well, at this point, it doesn't matter. Now, you're also a big Yankee fan. Do you like what they've done this year? <sighs> 
Yeah, Cole, well, that was such a risk. <laughs> They're edgy. <laughs> no, how can you not I, like Cole? You know Cole? what? I like the team... I liked the team two years ago when, b before Stanton. Not that I have anything against Stanton. I just like it because they didn't really have the big free agents. People started to actually like the Yankees two years ago. They were a lovable bunch. They were a lovable bunch. It was interesting because I had never experienced, I had, we hadn't experienced that in 30 years. Mm -hmm. was since Steinbrenner took over probably. And people really liked the team, as did I. I, I probably would get more satisfaction going to the World Series with that team than I would with Cole and, and Stanton if he was healthy. Yeah. Now, you, you've told the story to me before, but let me ask you on, on this show. Steinbrenner was a part of Seinfeld. How much interaction was there with George Steinbrenner to get his permission to use him, and how close did you guys come to actually having him play George Steinbrenner? There was never um, a thought to him playing George Steinbrenner, but it was just a call from Jerry to, to George. Uh, to, to, to George, to, to, George okay. to, to, uh, to ask him if we could use, you know, use his name on the show. But in the last episode, you guys wanted to use him, right? The show is face? In the last episode, yes. We decided, okay, we're going to put him in the show. And he, we, I, I guess Jerry must have called him because he came out, he did the show, he left. Then we started editing the show and he was... Terrible, but it was beyond bad. You know? <laughs> I mean, it was it was completely unusable. Really? Com oh my God! Completely. Un it was. It but was, he was good on Saturday Night Live. I, I know, but here's the thing: I I had been doing the voice over the back of the guy's head. Right. And you know, it was, it was kind of funny that voice over the back of his head, and the guy's gesticulating as I'm doing it. And so to go from that voice, that comedic voice, to Steinbrenner. Camera on him, terrible acting throughout. It just it didn't work. So of course you know the story. I had to call him up and tell. What him. was that like? <laughs> <laughs> I actually called Yankee Stadium. I got him on the phone. They got him, and he got on the phone, and I, I said, uh, "Mrs. Steinbrenner, uh, uh, it's Larry David from the uh, Seinfeld show." He goes, uh, "Yes, yes. What's going on?" <laughs> Uh, I go, well, you know, um, and I'm hemming and all. He goes, you could tell me I'm a big boy. I can take it. <laughs> <laughs> I already get why you didn't use him. Yeah. So then he, you say... So you I told him, I told him we have to cut him from the show, and um, that, that was... So yeah. that tape somewhere exists somewhere. You mean that phone call? No, 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 no. 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 The actual video. Oh, the, oh, the, oh, the actual footage. Do you have that at home somewhere? I don't have the footage, but I'm sure it's somewhere. Yeah. That would be priceless to see. You know what? I hadn't thought about it, but that sounds like a pretty good idea. Yeah. Why, uh, why Pepitone for the jersey in that episode? Did we say the name Pepitone? Yeah. Probably because it's a funny sounding name. Yeah, it is. So not because of a particular fondness for him as no, a. I did like him, but I, the na it's a good name. Pepitone. Yeah. <laughs> was there a, you, you're someone that doesn't hate the Mets, right? So not at all. Right. I like the Mets. So, but yeah. was there ever just? I a... like the Mets and and the Giants. I'm a Giants fan too. Oh, so what do you want to say? What do you want to well, say? Well, about I, 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 say I, what do you want to say? I've called you a sports fraud before. You're cool with that, right? A sports fraud? Yeah, but you can't root for both teams. No, no, you're crazy. Wow, well, crazy? <laughs> no, you're crazy. Well, you just get to pick which team is hot, and I'll just follow them? No, if the Mets are doing well, I, I, no, only when they <laughs> play each other do I root for the other. To, for so the, you root for the Yankees when they play the when Mets? When they play the Mets, I root for the Yankees. But I'll, I'll go to Met games. I'll root for the Mets. How dare you, Don? <laughs> I just think it's hard because it's territoriality, right? I mean, you no, grow up with like, no, Yankee no, fans are arrogant to Mets fans and vice versa. Mets no. fans are impossible to deal with in 86. <laughs> I rooted for the Mets in 86. Uh, do you know that they Billy played the Red Sox? Who do you want me to root for? They just don't watch. You missed the first two periods of game six. You could no. miss a whole game. Don, I was jumping in the air in that ninth <laughs> inning. Billy Crystal <laughs> was sitting here, and Don took exception to the fact that Billy Crystal was a big Yankee fan and wore the Met hat in City Slickers. And he called him a fraud, and Billy Crystal did not like it. Uh, I can live with that. Uh, <laughs> what am I supposed to... Uh, I this you, is no, what I, I do. I, I get where you're coming from with the fraud stuff, but... Right. It doesn't mean that I, I hate well, you. Why would I make it up? 
I'm not going to make up that I, that I like them. No, who, but, who am I supposed to? Who oh, am I supposed to please by saying that? Oh, I can't call fans a fraud. And then when you know Kevin James is here, not call him a fraud for rooting for the Islanders and Rangers. I'm just trying to be consistent. That's See, all. The Islanders and Rangers. That See, I that's, that's, oh, that's, that's the same that's division. Line. That's tough to do. That's the line. Yeah, yeah, but, that, that I don't get. But, yeah. but, but that's different. They're playing each other, you know, 20 right. times a year. That's a whole different thing. So you got a lot of Mets in there. The Keith Hernandez episode is iconic, and right. then you got your Yankee stuff. So how did that work with you and Jerry? Because Jerry's a big Met fan, so how was the back and forth with that? Well, because of the, um, I don't know, that show that we did. I, I don't know why we had to use Keith, but uh, I don't remember. Yeah. But that was, Keith was, he was great. perfect. Keith was great. Yeah, he yeah. was great. Yeah. Um, did you, you sort of have developed this brilliant reputation of like everybody loves you, but everyone's like, oh, if you meet Larry, you know, you don't want to bother him. You know, he's not trying to schmooze it up all day. From your mouth to God's ear. I, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's, yeah. You've done a great job. People yeah. know it. Like I saw everyone I know, Larry, who's met you. In fact, my agent met you the other day. He was wearing Larry David cufflinks at the Golden Globes. Oh, my God. That was him. That's Dipperstein, my agent. Uh, wow. Yeah. So he, he loves you, by the way, of course. What cufflinks? I had my face on his cufflinks. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. Did he get a cut for that? No, I, I don't know if Larry sees a cut. I think those are bootleg. <laughs> but you've done this great job developing this reputation that people know I'm not going to bother you. In fact, everyone who gets a picture with him, I'm not kidding. I know four people have a picture with Larry David. They're all blurred because everyone's so rushed trying to get their quick picture. The question is, though, do you enjoy this part of celebrity or did you enjoy pre-curb more when people knew your name but didn't know your face constantly you know it's it's uh, i enjoy this more it's more f it's fun to to walk around everybody's your friend not everybody but a lot of people are your friend i've gotten when i couldn't get a cab i've had people hey larry hey, 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 you need a ride hey, hey, where you go you know and, I, and i'll get in the car Wait, oh, no way come on you'll get in a stranger's car twice i've gotten a stranger's car to get someplace Twice. How'd that work out? In New York. Worked out perfectly. You're still here. <laughs> yeah. One time I was late for the Letterman show, and I was starting to panic. Yeah. And and I and because the car didn't show up. So I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking, hey Larry. I go, hey, could you take me to 50 Fifth Theater? <laughs> I got to the there. Nobody would ever believe that. Yeah, because yeah, no, true. Now what'd you and talk done, about I've in the car? Twice. What'd you talk about in the car? What, what did we talk about? I mean, yeah, I mean I, I, you know, did he annoy you? No. I mean, it was, it, was, it was doing me a favor, you know, it, it, it can't be annoying. <laughs> did you give him any money or anything? What are you, what's wrong with you? I don't know, he just did you a huge favor. You were going to be late for Letterman. You throw him well, 10 bucks or something? Well, Larry did the guy a favor, letting him have to no, I, I didn't give him any money, Don. Right. That would be insulting. Uh, that's funny. We had that same conversation. Yeah. About the lady at the garden, our friend at the garden, who dropped off my computer. Dawn. And you, who, Dawn, and you guys thought I should hand her 20 bucks. you got to make an offer. I, you if gotta, you're friends you with the person, it's, I think it's weird. You know, I'm, it's possible I did. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I did, God. See, that, that would be a good episode, right? Yeah. Do you tip the friend? Did you ever have... But, by the way, not a bad idea. Yeah, right. That, that'd be perfect. Not a bad idea, Don. Now, uh, I don't need any well, couple why, years. why did he bench Kako in that, th that third period after he scored? First goal in Why do I love hearing him say that? First I goal <laughs> in 14 games... Add an assist. He benches him because he takes a bad penalty. But, Come on, that's ridiculous. But you got to learn when you take the bad penalties. You can't be out there in these one-goal games. Every game is important. I can't believe I'm breaking down hockey with Larry Dave. But you, but you think putting him on the bench is going to make him? You don't think he knows that he took a bad penalty? He knows benching him is going to do anything. They need another He's goal. He's done a good job. I'm not going to question Quinn. Wow, Homer. He's 18 Homer. years old. Homer. You are such a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> he won't question his team. Did you ever have? Any envy of Seinfeld's, Jerry Seinfeld's celebrity in a, in a show that you were equal co-creator with no. that you weren't on camera? I, I didn't want to be on camera. You didn't I, want to play George Costanza? Never, there was never a moment when that was talked about where it was even considered. It wasn't, I, I wasn't, I had no thoughts of doing really? it. Really? Yeah, not one. And once it became this huge cultural thing, there still wasn't envy? No. No, I was fine. I was happy doing what I was doing. So, so yeah. with the, the lips on the 20 when you're at the bodega, like how do you end up on camera there? If you didn't really want to be on camera, how did you end up? It may have been a last-minute thing. An actor, you know, mm -hmm. isn't there, or we just thought of it at the last second. I'll do it. Was it a okay. tremendous amount of work? I, keep, I, I read books about it that it was just exhausting. It, it, yeah, it was a lot of work. Yeah, not like uh, not like this. Not like this. Yeah. But, but was it so much work that you couldn't enjoy it? Because you you have like five year gaps and yeah. there are plenty yeah. of time to enjoy it. Yeah, there's there's a we were right on the line. I right. mean, some of it was so enjoyable, and some of it was holy mackerel. How 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 are we going to do this? 
How are we going to do this? Jerry told a great story on the Mark Twain uh, presentation for mm -hmm. Julie Louis Dreyfus that network people give you notes and they're always useless. Yeah. But after your first show, they said you kind of need a woman, and they brought in. He said that's the first network note that ever worked. Yeah. So she wasn't, yeah, she in, wasn't the, in the pilot. Right. It was that, but there was a woman in the pilot. She was the, the waitress, waitress, right? Waitress, yeah. Did you have bigger plans no, for her? Stuff. Yeah. You know, we didn't know what we were doing. Just the pilot. <laughs> <laughs> there were no plans. <laughs> but I'm glad they, they said something. Do you because like she's unbelievable. She, I, I mean, mean, she was uh, such a huge... She's pull. the greatest. Did yeah. you have a, a favorite recurring character in Seinfeld? You mean other than the four? Yeah, other than the four. Well, Newman. The Maish, New, Newman. Newman, yeah. yeah. Newman was great. Now, on a darker question, what are you guys going to do on Curb without a guy that's so such a big part of Curb? I mean, he passed away. Really tragic. Yeah, yeah that was Bob horrible. Einstein. Yeah. What do you do? Um, Will you address it this year? We, ad we address it. Mm -hmm. But um, we got... I, I, I don't really want to say what we did okay. exactly, but... But it is referred. We, we did something, yeah. Now, your dad in the show also passed away. Yes. Was that since the last episode was December of 2017? Did Shelley Berman pass away since then? I don't... I think he did. I don't remember. I stopped writing a father for me in the show after uh -huh. my father died. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. You just couldn't do it? You just It didn't feel right? Uh, I just didn't think of anything. Was right. that like your dad, the Shelley Berman character? No. Not at all? I don't think so. Okay. No. Are you surprised that, like, I, I was making the jokes earlier about the Jewish part of it, and it really is, I mean, I was talking about this with my brother yesterday. You are so significant. In, in 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 America in general, but in Jewish homes, you really are such a significant character. Did you think that it would cross over so much and everyone would sort of get the shtick? Or did you think it was a little bit more niche at first? I, I never thought that I was uh, only working for a particular segment of the population. I, I just, I didn't think that, oh, only Jews are going to get this. I didn't think that. But do you get do you get a lot of extra sort well, of love? what I get what I get is walking down the street I get Jews coming up to me going hey hey Larry uh, I'm a Jew oh, yeah. <laughs> believe me it's my whole hey, life hey congratulations good for you yeah. <laughs> that's, that's my whole life yeah. you're, you're lucky you're not a New York based uh, radio personality where people just yell out hey Jew well, on the street well, that's just that's, they're singing Beatles songs <laughs> you're, that, missing, you're not uh, hearing uh, it the uh, right way I hope so. that's just awful yeah, that oh, happens that's, that's terrible yo, or this yeah. line yo I don't normally like Jews <laughs> but <laughs> and I'm like that's not a good start did you, yeah, that's bad when did you realize that J.B. Smoove was going to be around for a long time. As soon as he auditioned, he turned and looked at me. That and I burst out laughing and he had the part. He just I said, Hey Leon, and he's sitting at a table and he looks up and he gave me that you know, one of those that look that had me. Now Andrew Gunling dug up actually the clip of George Steinberg on Seinfeld where Elaine goes to him and says she's not gonna go to George's wedding because she doesn't want to be alone. She doesn't have a date. And let's let's see if George was good. I don't have anyone to talk to, and I'm not sitting at that singles table all by myself. Wait a minute, young lady. What's this about singles tables? I don't sit at singles tables. Singles tables are for losers. The Yankees have won 33 pennants and 22 world championships. We're winners. We don't sit with losers. Well, and I've got an idea. You're going to go to the party with me. Oh, well, gee. You dance, don't you? Lose a little weight, get yourself in shape, and then when they throw the bridal bouquet, you'll maybe get it. I don't know, mister. Well, I know. You're the cause of all this, Costanza. It's your wedding, so either she goes with me or you're out of here. Yesterday's newspaper. <laughs> of course she's gonna go with you, Mr. Stein. Well, that's uh, fine. I don't like to put undue pressure on people. Larry, I think he nailed it. What, what what did I just hear? <laughs> That's on YouTube? What is that? What is it, Andrew? I just was Googled George Steinbrenner on Seinfeld, and it was the first clip that came up. What? You've never heard that since all those years? No, I cannot even believe this exists. It's on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? He wasn't bad. No, no, no. At the end, it got bad. It did get bad no, at the end. But the I thought he was brilliant. The, oh, God, I, I know you. I, I know you yeah, did. He wasn't bad. I don't know. <laughs> You're kind of hard on him. I don't know what we were thinking. <laughs> 
I guess you envisioned something that was was different, but now over time, yeah, it, it exactly. seems like it's it's now pretty you, funny. Now you kind of feel sorry that you cut it out. Uh, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> he knows it was the right show. <laughs> well, season ten starts in two weeks. Uh, a week, the night, a either. week from this Sunday. A the week 19th. from this Sunday. Yeah. Do, now, you, do you even? I mean, HBO doesn't do ratings, but I mean, how do you? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. I don't even know what they mean. Right. Um, when they was telling me the numbers on Seinfeld, I didn't know what they meant. Mm -hmm. I never really paid uh, attention to them. Not, not like you guys. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we do pay attention. Pay attention. Right. You guys pay attention. Is it just the viewership yeah. or do they add the stream? Is that the... <laughs> 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 if they got to count the stream. Yeah, yeah. We, we've been told. Wait, we you, haven't, you haven't said this is the last season, right? You're just leaving I, it open? I, I'm leaving it open. Yeah, All I haven't right. said that. Don't say it. Yeah, please. Just continue. Make people it. want more. I mean, don't don't say I'm doing another season. Don't don't say anything. Gee, I like what you've been Let doing. Let people I, guess. I, I never say anything. I like to see if I can write it first. Right. Before I say I'm doing it. I mean, the only way it's the last season is if you kill yourself off in the last episode. You don't have to do that. I tried to do that. I think. Really? Yeah, I did it in season five. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I did it. I I I, I killed myself and, and went to heaven. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I will tell you this. I yeah. I was sent. Uh, an advanced copy of the first show. It's 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 wonderful. I'm not going to give away anything, but it's worth watching again. It's just it, you. It's hard to be great all the time. Believe me, I know that. So it must be difficult for you. Oh, Michael, <laughs> so difficult. <laughs> Did you ever envision this sort of? I mean, you're not. Uh, I don't want to make you uncomfortable, but I will. You're you're adored. I mean, people love you. You're an American icon. Did you ever envision this for yourself? What? Yeah, you. <laughs> Oh, uh, I mean, come on, no. Did you ever want it? Did you envision that you'd be the, the announcer for the, for Yankees? the Yankees? Yeah. I, since I was nine, I wanted to be. But did you envision it? Did you see it? Did you think you would? I hoped. I didn't know. You if hoped, I, yeah, really? I hoped. That's, a, that's interesting. Yeah. If well, Bernie, what else could I do? Yeah. If Bernie were to win the election. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, would you would you oh. be happy to oh constantly make appearances on SNL? Oh. <laughs> Is that hard for you? You can't deal with it. You couldn't deal with coming here all the time, could you? You know, I loved I loved being on the show. I loved doing Bernie on the show, but to go in and the traveling from LA to New York for the weekend. That's, that's How does rough. that work? What day will they call you? Sometimes they call me on Thursday, coming tomorrow. So I'll have to fly in on Friday. Have you said no before? Uh no. So you, so you obviously in, you still enjoy it. I feel, I, I feel some sense of obligation now. To the show. Yeah, because it'll look kind of off. Mm -hmm. if right, I, if they have Kate McKinnon doing somebody Bernie. Somebody else is doing What's your, Do you have any relationship with Bernie? I, I met him when I did the show. And what, what was he like? And was he into the impression? He, he seemed friendly enough. You know? <laughs> he seemed like him. Yeah, he seemed like him. <laughs> he seemed like you doing him. Exactly, yeah. It, now, it is, it's uncanny. It may be the, it's as good an impression as being done of any of them. You yeah. know what, really, when you're from Brooklyn, everybody sounds the same. Right. Like, I could do anybody from Brooklyn. Any guy from Brooklyn is kind of easy to do. There's, we all have the same sort of speech patterns, and it's just, it's easy to fall into. The first time I ever saw him... Um, on television, I began to repeat what he was saying mm -hmm. because I just felt like I could, I had that voice that it was easy. Mm -hmm. So it's not, there's not much to it if, for, if you're from Brooklyn. Now, the last episode you were on was the Eddie Murphy episode. What was that vibe like in the studio? It must have been electric. Yeah, very exciting. Did you have a, do you have a relationship with Eddie Murphy? No, I've only, I, I had only met him once before. I, I, I always wanted to ask, and I'm glad I just remembered. So I watch the end of the show, and I see everybody talking and hugging. What's being said? You were in a deep conversation that show with somebody. What are you talking about as the music is playing at the end of the show? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the after party, or is it something deep? <laughs> Uh, you know, you just <laughs> you're just trying to fake your way through a conversation. Because <laughs> <Sorry, really. laughs> all you really want to really really like... do is get the hell out yeah. of there. You know? Do you ever go to the after party? Yeah, I do. yeah, I do. Yeah. And you stay till like four in the morning? No, I stay till three. Do you? Do you? Really? Interesting. Do you party when you go out? Are you Are you getting drunk ever at events like that? Well, that's personal. Very personal. Well, he goes out in public. No, He's a... ne never drunk. No. Tips that you have a few drinks. Not a few. One, maybe one. Do you have a drink of choice? 
Oh, Peter. Good. <laughs> wow, look at this. Peter really thrilled me here. <laughs> this is big stuff. Uh, uh, no. He's been waiting I years do. to meet you. Hi. You know, I, I guess if I had to have a drink, I would have a, uh, a martini. What's your favorite Shiva food? <laughs> What is wrong with you? Big, big fish. <laughs> this is a big moment for Peter. Yeah, he doesn't I mean, want to leave anything left on the table. I, I, I've quit going to those uh, to those things. You're not grazing M and M's. No. Yeah. The shivas are the they're the worst. Well, yeah. somebody died, Peter. No. Of course, they're the worst. I know, but I mean, you have the funeral and the shiva. It's just so much already, and it's, it's like a party, but it's a depressing party. It's horrible. I understand. I support you on that. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we let you go, because I know you're up against the clock. You mentioned earlier you liked the Yankees two years ago. They were fun and lovable. Yeah. Now, someone who's a huge fan of yours is the manager of the Yankees, Aaron Boone. He's listening right now. Is that right? And he just texted me. He said, this is gold. By the way, I think we're lovable. Huh. How are you lovable with a pitcher who's costing you, what, 30-something million a year? You can still be lovable. I don't think so. I'm, I'm, they're lovable to me because I'm a fan. Right. But the, not to anybody else. Well, now, I mean, they're the evil empire. I mean, Don, again. even Don, you're not a Yankee fan, no. right? And you have to admit, though, that you liked him a little bit more in 2017 than you do now. Well, yeah, because it's it's new, it's fresh, it's young team. Well, the right. came out of nowhere. Right. Yeah. You the, liked the, it's another, you, like an underdog story. You, you, you like that. You, you didn't you, hate them that right. year, And you right? loved them in 96, too. Like, well, you know, there wasn't a hateable team necessarily exactly. in 96. 98, they become saying, this evil they're, empire. They're a hateable team again. Well, you, Aaron Boone is lovable. I like Aaron Boone. Yeah. He's a very nice guy. Not, how could you not like Aaron Boone? But he was Boone? specific to why you feel that way. When Stanton came yeah, aboard, you, you it had that, it had that late 90s feel exactly. to it. Exactly. I didn't want to go back to right. that. So as a Yankee fan, if you had a button to push, you would not have had them sign Cole so they could still be lovable. I wouldn't sign Cole or Stan. I'd rather win through the farm system in trades. Interesting. I think there's a lot of people. I think Brian Cashman feels that way sometimes. Nah. I mean, to a point, but, I mean, they did sign Cole. I mean, how do you turn down the best pitcher in I, I, I mean, these, these uh, eight, ten-year contracts, uh, they, they never work Brian out. Brian Cashman just texted, we're lovable. Huh. Cashman, too? <laughs> yeah. By the way, though, it, but it's refreshing to hear you say that, because I don't think Yankees fans, it, they are, they generally, calls we get Larry, you hear the show sometimes, Yeah. they just want every single great player available. No, I don't want that. I, 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 want, a, a, I want the level, I want, I want the, the playing field almost level. Right. I, I, I want to win with uh, some scrappers, scrappers, some stars, right, yeah. a couple stars. So you, you, you love Ronald Torres. I did like him. <laughs> the big Torres guy. I did. He was good. <laughs> and also, I always gives knew you, you were a Torres guy. Gives you the wiggle room of enjoying a season in which you don't win. Now, if you anything short of a championship, I mean, is almost it, a waste it, of time. It's almost like a, even if you do win the championship, there's almost a so what quality to it. So what? You, you, you were supposed to. You should have, as opposed to the 2017 team. Wow, look, look what we did. You know, I, think it's, I think it's a huge difference. Will you be going to the World Series between the Yankees and the Dodgers this year? The Yankees and the Dodgers, huh? Mm. Well, uh, of Kind of lovable. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I'll go, of course. Right. Yeah. Do you go to Dodger games? It doesn't. It you doesn't, saved a life I still, I still root the same. Right. I'm still going to be rooting for the team. I'm just saying I'd rather root for a team without big free agents. Gotcha. When you, when, you, when you arrive in New York, does it feel like home, or does it feel like I'm on a trip and I can't wait to get back to L.A.? Well, I have a house in L.A. Right. So it, That's that's home home. But, I, but when, uh, of course, this feels like home when I walk around. Yeah. So, either, so they both feel like home yeah. in a way. One feels like home because of the house. <laughs> <laughs> the other feels like home because of the environment. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So if you could actually move the house into New York. <laughs> yeah, if I could have that house here. Right, uh, and the yeah. weather. And the weather, that right. I would live here, yeah. Larry, I will see you later great tonight. Stuff. We thank you for coming. It was so nice of you that to do great. this. Good to see you. Thank you so much. Thank the you. great Larry David. When we come back, we'll talk about what we just talked about, more about the Giants' hire of a new head coach.